liberals look around the country and they see tent cities popping up in our communities. They see millions lining up at food banks and families falling further and further into debt. And what do they think is the cause of all these problems? That Canadians aren't paying enough in taxes. That must be why they've already hiked the carbon tax five times and why they're going to hike it to 61 cents a litre. How can making everything more expensive provide any relief for Canadians? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, I am glad that the Conservatives are finally talking about the economy because it gives me a chance to highlight some good economic news we've had. Last week we learned that inflation in August was at 2%. In fact, for all of this year, inflation has been within Bank of Canada's target range. That means interest rates are coming down. Meanwhile, wages have been outpacing inflation for 19 months in a row. But the Conservatives don't like to talk about that because good news for Canadians is bad news. Yeah, exactly. The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. She can tell all the people lining up at food banks that they've never had it so good and she knows that prices are not coming down. She also knows that her carbon tax won't stop a single forest fire or flood. They've admitted that. So Canadians get the brutal double whammy of all the extra costs associated with natural disasters plus the carbon tax on top of it. And now the NDP leader is trying to pull off another stunt. He's trying to fool Canadians that he's got some new position on the carbon tax. In reality, he loves it. He's voted for it 24 yeah. times. If they're so sure that Canadians love their carbon tax, why don't they take it to the Canadian people and let them decide in a carbon tax election? Yeah. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, all these Conservatives know how to do is talk Canada down. And you know why that is? It's because they don't want Canadians to ask themselves what the Conservatives really stand for. That's because the Conservatives have a hidden agenda. They have a hidden austerity agenda. And it is time for us all to ask ourselves, what would they cut? Would they cut child care? I think so. Would they cut dental care? I think so. Would they cut our housing plan? There she would. The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. It's Canadians who are cutting back as they've seen their paychecks devalued and prices skyrocket. But it's not just the carbon tax that the NDP and Liberals are hiking. The new tax hike that the government is announcing today will hit the middle class hard. In the middle of a housing crisis, they're raising taxes on carpenters and roofers. In fact, the Canadian Federation of Apartment Associations said this, quote, the capital gains increase will discourage the construction of new rental homes for Canadians. Why is the government's response to the housing crisis punishing the people who actually build the homes? Right. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, I am really glad to hear the Conservatives talk about housing because last week we made a very important announcement on housing. Last week we announced that amortizations for first-time home buyers and everyone buying new builds will be extended to 30 years. That is going to make help young Canadians make the dream of home ownership a reality, and it will get more homes built faster. And I am shocked that the Conservatives are opposed to this essential measure. 